Hello. Uh, and thank you all for coming to the Holliston Senior Center today um, to, for the next presentation that I'm doing here. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 60 of us. That's a lot, right? So I get to do just this because there's somebody else there that does all the other stuff. Um, and uh, by the way, we have, there, there are 60 of us. There's 40 in Worcester and then 20 in, right in Westboro. That's where I, where I spend a lot of my time. Um, so the purpose, people often ask me, they say, well, what is elder law exactly about? And the purpose of it, some of it is to really kind of let you know some law. Because if you are, my clients are all over 65. I'll tell you that most of my clients, the main reason that they're talking to me is they're either worried about Alzheimer's or they have Alzheimer's or somebody they know has Alzheimer's. That's a lot of the, because a lot of the issues around getting older or making sure you don't go broke before you die because you have Alzheimer's. But uh, a lot of this, the, the, what I do really is in terms of, of my work is to try to connect people to other people. Um, so that people will call me and say, so I got this problem, now what do I do? Um, and, and, and my typical clients are, are my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been here before, you've seen them. My friends Frank and Mary and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And, and they, have, they live in a house here in Holliston, and they've got a nice house, but their goal in, of their life is to simply live in their house until they die and then be buried in the backyard. It's very simple. And then um, when they die, they like whatever assets they have left, which they hope they have some, to be divided among their children. And so if that, does that, if that sounds familiar, right, these are kind of very common goals. This is their situation. They have a, a house worth about $300,000. He has an IRA worth 150. They have an annuity worth 100. They have bank accounts worth 75. So they've got total assets of $625,000. I'm, I'm mentioning this because later on we may be talking about some of this. Um, uh, Frank's got uh, income of $2,000. He's got a uh, social security check every month of 1,500 and a pension of five. Mary has half of Frank's or 750, half of Frank's social security. And they're gonna be okay and they just want to stay in their house. And so their question, they, but they may have any number of questions regarding, so see, I'm getting older now, so what kind of things do I need to know, you know, about as I'm getting older? What kinds of programs are available? Because there are a lot for folks who are getting older. And now the first place that you call, if you're thinking about that, or if you've got any of those questions, or if you are later on kind of in crisis, is you probably call them. Um, uh, every Massachusetts community has a, a, a council on aging, right? We're one of the few states that that's true. Actually, I was just coming back from, I just spent three days in Minnesota where they've done doing some really cutting edge stuff in terms of dementia issues. But very few of their 300 communities have councils on aging, right? So it's very hard to kind of figure a lot of this stuff out. We're very lucky here. There's been so much money over time that has spent, been spent, a lot of it coming from the state, uh, but a lot of it coming from communities to really kind of try to empower elders. So the call you make is to the Council on Aging, and the person who probably will answer that call, well, I see Ellen just says it's here, but the person who's probably going to answer that call is going to be Linda Marshall, um, who has been here for a long time. Ten years. Ten years, and who's going to who talk to you a little bit about what the, what the programs are that, were, that are available here, uh, and also allow you to kind of think about um, what other programs that she might be able to direct you to. So, Linda. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And again, I'm Linda Marshall, and I'm the Outreach Coordinator here at the Senior Center. And as we said, I've been here 10 years. I've also worked 35 years in social services, primarily dealing with the older population. So I have a very vast related background. Um, and you are right that generally if you call looking for information about any kind of service or needs, our receptionist is going to send your call to me. It, we do, we have a lot of in-house programs um, for seniors. And those you all, does everyone here get our newsletter? Mm -hmm. So every month you get a newsletter that tells you all the regular programs that we have going along as well as special programs like this here today. You know, we have things to help you keep fit and healthy. We have a wonderful nutrition program, which is really underutilized, um, where twice a week you can come and get a hot, delicious meal. You can socialize with friends. Um, it's, so it's great to get out of the house for those of you who just might not want to cook anymore or, or just 
to have some companionship with other people. How many people usually come? Typical day. Typical lunches have really gotten a little bit smaller, so around 20. Yeah. Um, we've had people that have not coming any longer, and we don't have a lot of new people coming. But there's no limit to how many people can show up. Long right? as we know in advance. As long as you know. We, ha we do have to order the meals for you. Because you don't cook you. extra when you're in the back there to make uh, sure that. Right. Uh, At this point, <laughs> our meals are, are catered, so we have to order uh, two days ahead from our caterer. So it's great if you let us know two days in advance. We try not to ever turn anybody away. Occasionally, somebody will show up, and we usually can ac accommodate a couple of extra, but it is really helpful to know that in advance. Um, one of the other huge programs that we offer here, and it's my personal pride and joy here, is our transportation program. We can provide you transportation to 14 different towns. And some people think that that's only for medical appointments. It is not. It is for whatever you would like to go to in those 14 towns. Um, we also provide shop, uh, transportation to grocery shopping. Because, is that because you have your own van? We do. We have two vans. Yeah. We partner with the Metro West Regional Transit Authority, who funds a lot of our transportation. Do you drive? I do no. not drive. <laughs> <laughs> I schedule. I don't drive. Yeah. Um, we work with the MWRTA. Their call center actually takes the call. So when you call to reserve your ride, they send it to me, and then I schedule it out with the drivers. I have people that even still drive, and they don't mind driving around Holliston, but they don't want to drive up to Route 9 to the Wellness Center for their appointment. So they might call and just to take those types of rides. Um, and others that we help them with all of their needs. Um, that program has gone from 600 rides a year to over 4,000 rides a year in my 10 years here. Um, and I think that that's just huge. So, you know, if you, yes. At this point, we do not. Um, it's oh, by the way, could you repeat the question just to make sure they pick it up on cable? Uh, okay. She wants to know if we go to Worcester or Boston, at, which at this point, we do not. There is a shuttle to Boston that the Metro West Regional Transit Authority runs on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We can help you to get to the shuttle in Framingham. Um, and then from there, you would transfer to the shuttle to go into Boston. And there is a schedule on their website. And I can certainly help you with more information on that if you need it or would like it. Um, we also offer lots of health and fitness programs. We have Pilates, we have Zumba, we have exercise, we have Qigong, we have line dancing. Am I missing any? Uh, <laughs> uh, we have social programs. We have parties for all the bigger events. Um, we have classes such as our art classes, um, quilting class. Writers group, thank you. <laughs> and, and can find people find the schedule of all that? Do you have a website where we, they can find that, or that they, they can to go call? to the Town of Holliston website and link to our web page on there? Yes, um, as well as all of you who say you get our newsletter. All of this is in our newsletter every single month, including the calendar at a glance. So you can just look at any individual day, or you can find the description about any of the programs throughout the newsletter. The other thing I do is when people need other services. In, the, in their home is that I help you connect to those services. And that might be through Bay Path Elder Services, and Julia will speak a little bit more specific about what they offer. Or it might be the various home care agencies. Um, yesterday, I actually got a call from somebody that needed to arrange private ambulance transport for somebody, and they had no idea how to do that. Um, and I was able to set that all up for them. I never know what I'm going to be asked, and I will do my best to help you and find the information. Um, as well as I can help with um, understanding some of the things with Mass Health. We have a Shine Counselor that will help you with Medicare. I can help you with some of the basic questions of Medicare. If it's more than that, I will refer you to her. Is the um, Shine Counselor available on a particular day or, or kind of on yeah. demand? How does that work? She's usually, she's here every week, um, but her schedule does change from yeah. week to week. But if you call the receptionist, have that in the book and if you can't she's very accommodating so say she's going to be here Wednesday next week and you couldn't come she will get in touch back with you and set up something that does work for you both and she's very very accommodating and um, Sandy's also been with us for I don't know five or six years at least now um, so she's good at what she does and open enrollment is coming beginning next month so it is the time to be looking at your insurance if you're thinking about making any changes for that um, but I refer to private for homemaking services, personal care services, um, people, you know, I need to, to move and how do I even begin that process. It doesn't mean that I'm going to do it, but I can connect you with the people that can help you with those things. Um, 
Any specific questions? Yes. We do run a, every Tuesday morning uh, from 9 to 10. We run a blood pressure clinic, yes. Um, we have volunteer nurses that do that for us. Um, and when you look into the future, was there, are there any particular things that you think might be coming that you're kind of looking at trying to develop for new programs? One of the biggest things that we're trying to develop right now is that we're currently, our meals are catered and we're looking to become a cooking kitchen that we can actually maybe increase the meals that we offer, both in maybe more days, more offerings, making it a little bit more restaurant style than it currently is. Um, we're, we're actively working on that. Um, it looks like the state might be helping us out with some of that funding that's still in the trying to figure out what it means phase. Jean's shaking her head in the back <laughs> um, on that. And we also periodically like try to survey and ask people what it is that you would like and what you would want. Um, I'm gonna use, again, my transportation is an option. I've just added a new program going into a section of Milford twice a month um, where people can go out for lunch and they can go to Kohl's or Target or decide they don't like that we go to grocery shopping on Wednesdays at 7.30 in the morning so they would rather go to Stop and Shop or Hannaford's at 11 o'clock. Um, and any of those businesses in that 495, 109, Route 16 triangle here on so the Holliston end of Milford. Um, being a totally new program that we're offering in that. That's been one of the biggest growth programs we've had is that transportation. Um, and I'm always looking for suggestions and ideas. I would love to be able to do the Boston and Worcester. It's also a very expensive program to run, so it gets cost prohibitive to tie up a bus for a whole day with one person. Um, so we haven't figured out a way to make that work. I'm always open to ideas and suggestions. Linda, thank you very, very You're much. Welcome. I really appreciate it. And, and so I just wanted to, thank you. So, so I just wanted to mention, so one of, the, one of the reasons for this program and the reason why the camera is in the back, uh, I don't know how many of you people are always here, right? But a lot of this presentation is for people who aren't here. It's for the people who aren't, who, who have not come and maybe don't have a sense of how many things actually are here, how many services are provided, how many activities that there are, so that they'll come down. Because I know it's, I do nothing but this kind of work, and so I spend a lot of time at senior centers. And I spend a, time, a lot of time talking to elders who never go to the senior center, right? Because they say, oh, well, those people are too old. Or sometimes, those people are too young. The main thing is they have no idea. The point is they haven't been to the senior center, so they kind of have no idea. And I guess it's really important because the more folks who are, who are here, just the more dynamism inevitably happens at the senior center. So that's why I wanted to kind of give you that overview. So the other folks that we wanted to talk about and the folks that oftentimes Linda will be referring to are our friends at um, the Bay Path Elder Services. How many here uh, have heard of Bay Path Elder Services? Ah. Using them right now. Using them, you're using them right now. Many, I came here, I think about a year ago, the first presentation I did, and I asked that question, and I think about a third of the people had heard of Bay Path Elder Services. Um, Bay Path Elder Services is probably, it, it is the great funnel through which most federal and state dollars for elders shows up. It's a, it's, it, they, they are a nonprofit entity. There are 27 entities like this across Massachusetts. Each one is responsible for a different area. Bay Pass area covers 14 communities, which includes Holliston, right? And within that area, they provide a tremendous number of programs. And, and we have Julia Schneiderman, did I pronounce your name? Julia Schneiderman from Bay Path to talk about what some of those programs are. Um, we often, you often bump into Bay Path if you're really sick, because Bay Path is also, um, they are the designated kind of certifying entity that would certify whether or not you were eligible for mass health nursing home care, whether you're medically eligible. So without their cooperation, you're not on. Um, they are also the ones that certify if you're very sick and if you need a lot of care, whether or not if you, if you would otherwise be eligible for a nursing home, you are medically able to actually stay home uh, as long as you get a lot of home care. And if they do that kind of certification, then MassHealth will pay for a lot of that home care. So they're a very, very important organization. Um, that, those are some of their big pieces, 
but there's a ton of other things that they do. So we asked Julia to come here just to talk to you about some of those many, many other things that they do. Julia. There's your mic. There's that. There's the mic. Okay. You're ready to go, all right? Okay, so someone put up a little joke here. Uh, so Bay Path has a couple other names around here. Uh, it's not the college, not the Vogue Tech, not the Humane Society. Uh, we are one of 27 aging services access points. Um, so every part of Massachusetts has an elder service that um, services it, like Boston Elvis Services and uh, another one services Boston because it's so big. So as Arthur said, we do the 14 communities listed here in Metro West. Um, and Tri-Valley you know, does Franklin. So each town is covered. Uh, we're also an area agency on aging, um, federal designation, so we get funds for certain things like uh, Meals on Wheels, I believe, comes through that. Um, we provide an array of services and programs for older adults, caregivers, and younger individuals with disabilities. So people think of Bay Path only for people of a certain age, but we also do a lot for younger folks with disabilities. So that's important to keep in mind. Uh, so this is just a little umbrella uh, showing a few of the programs. Um, information and referral, you can just call up and ask any sort of information and they will again send you to the right place. Uh, the and they're really good and there's somebody that's always there and they're, I mean, they're just terrific, terrific, terrific. Thank you. Sorry, just an editorial <laughs> comment. But I sent a lot of people to Bay Path. Um, the caregiver program is for folks who are a spouse of someone or a son or daughter of someone that is um, possibly needing, needing some assistance. That's, a, again, a great free program. Uh, you can get a lot of um, support and ideas for the future to help you work through. Um, By the way, how much, was it, how much did it cost again? That was free. It was a free. <laughs> most, many, many of their programs are, are actually free. Your tax dollars at work. That's right. <laughs> Uh, the Meals on Wheels. Has anyone here ever had any Meals on Wheels? All right. All right. Very good. I didn't pay him anything. <laughs> there, there, there's all sorts of different Meals on Wheels, and many people are very happy with them. Uh, if you have a diabetic needs or a low salt, et cetera, they can accommodate for that. Um, and, of course, the home care is a big big piece and that's what we'll do next. Um, so how does it work? You're interested in getting services, so you call 508-573-7200 <laughs> and uh, they're going to ask you basic information, um, medical, you know, name, address, etc., uh, financial, and then what do you need help with, basically, because some folks say, oh, I'd really like someone to come vacuum my living room. And I always say, gosh, I would too. But <laughs> this is not just uh, <laughs> housekeeping. You need to need assistance with several um, things. And, but it can be transportation. If you can't get groceries or if you, so right now someone is helping you, you know, that's a huge need. Medication management, um, some folks need personal care. So they'll go down the list and really ask you what, you know, what are you needing help with. What's the phone number again? 508. 573 So it's not in Metro West? Um, that is. It's in Marlboro. Marlboro. Yep, 573. Well, if the uh, request was for transportation, then would you switch it over to Linda? Well, it's, um, you, again, you have to have enough needs. It can't just be one thing. Um, but but it, 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 oftentimes they do refer them back to me. Yeah. If it's if it's appropriate to somebody who could be independent with the transportation, you do have to be independent to use our transportation program or have a caregiver with you. But say uh, Holliston doesn't go to Boston, right. so um, that that might be addressed. Oh, uh, so someone will will assess you on the phone and see if you will prob possibly qualify, and then they'll come to your home and really do it even more in depth, and then they will s look and 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 make a plan. It's usually up to three hours a week of, of some kind of help that you get. It might be medical transportation. Some people have had Lifeline paid for as part of that, Meals on Wheels, um, often the grocery shopping or laundry. Um, they, you know, certainly work around you. If you know, I, there are some folks who come here Mondays and Wednesdays for lunch. They will work around that. So you're, 
person won't come on those days to help you. So these are some of the things that are covered uh, through your plan. You basically make a plan with your case manager, and that can always change, you know. Uh, that is, it's really sort of a cleaning out if someone has, a, yeah, a lot of stuff. No, no, it's really, and that's, yeah, it's not used a, a whole lot. Um, the, the most things are, um, yeah, Meals and Wheels, Lifeline, uh, the grocery shopping, the, the home management, um, and that type of thing. Oh, and we're back to Frank and Mary. Oh, and Mary. by the way, can you give folks a sense of when you say, well, you need to have some needs in order to qualify for these things. What kinds of needs are you talking about? Yep. Um, so again, personal care, uh, which is, you know, bathing often. Uh, some people need help transferring to get to one thing to another. Um, for a lot of folks, it is getting your groceries or it's making meals, which is where Meals and Wheels might come in. Um, transportation is a big thing. Uh, sometimes um, money management, uh, medical, managing your meds. So. There's, there's quite a few things that can fall under. And Julia, my understanding with the money management program, they don't actually need to have those ADL needs. To that's right. The money management program. That's right. Yep. Right. That's an independent right. um, program. And that's really what, what I wanted to kind of emphasize. A lot of times people will think, well, you know, I'm not really that sick. You know, I'm still, I still, you know, I can eat by myself, I can dress, I can do all these things. And so maybe it doesn't qualify. And I guess what I'd always tell you is, you know, kind of rule of thumb, don't say no to yourself, right? Ask that, tell them what your, what your situation is and what your needs are and let them say no, right? Because you're going to be surprised. Often they're going to say yes. And say, if you, these are the kinds of things you, that she was just describing for which you may have needs that they can take care of. That's all. And sometimes people have pulmonary or heart issues, which, you know, you're finding it harder to do some of these things. You know, definitely that's a huge thing. Or maybe going to the hospital and come out and things have changed a little, so you need, you know, help. So that's a good point. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, I just, once again, I'm just kind of, so if you're Frank and Mary, remember that, that in these, for all of those programs, you're not needing to be qualifying for mass health. So you can qualify for all those programs, even if you have all these assets, right? This isn't something that is asset-based. There is a, for some of them, there is an income criterion. Like for example, for, that, for, the, for the home care, there is an income criterion. And if your income is below a certain amount, there's a copay, right? But think about what she just described in terms of what was being done, right? She said, you know, oftentimes they will get people Say, say you're getting just three hours a week. I see a lot of people getting like three to six hours a week. Three to hours a week of this kind of assistance. Say that that assistance was going to otherwise cost you uh, $30 or $20 an hour, right? Times three is $60, $60 for a, a day, right? Or for a, for a week. Times four would be $240, a little bit, you know, a little bit more than that, right? So the, the, the maximum, so Frank and Mary can qualify for this program except that they would have to pay a copay. Given Frank and Mary's income, their maximum copay is like $101, right? It's not that much money, a right? A month, a month. So you're getting a substantial discount, right? Most of the money for most of these services are actually being paid for by the state. So you, you, it's a wonderful benefit. These programs are all funded by the state by the Commonwealth of Mass, so these are your tax dollars at work. So you kind of like don't want to miss them. That's all. A um, couple of other things. Yes, ma'am. Is this only based on um, your income or the, do assets? That's why, that's why I mentioned it. The, the, is, the question is, is it only based on income or is it based on assets? It is not based on assets at all. It's totally based on income. So Frank and Mary, that case I gave you, Frank and Mary have $625,000 in assets and they can qualify for all this, right? And depending on their income, they're going to pay a small copay. But m once again, most people don't realize this. They assume that unless they are just have no assets, because people are so used to thinking about programs in terms of mass health, for which you need to qualify by showing that you have no assets. Okay. So 
very briefly, if you're that kind of, that young person who is kind of looking around and the only other things that you need to do, and I'm just going to go through these briefly, is people will often ask me, well, what else do I have to do? Don't I have to go because I'm worried about the future? Do I have to, you know, leave all, do I have to give all of my money away to my kids? Do I, what do I have to do? The only things you really need to do in that situation, you need those three things taken care of. You need a health care proxy. You need a MOLST form and a power of attorney. Uh, what's a MOLST form? I'm going to get to that in just, in just a second. To get a health care proxy, once again, through your health care proxy, you are saying if you become disabled and only then you're giving someone the power to make medical decisions for you, right? As long as you're not, as long as your doctor has not declared that you are incapable of making those decisions, you stay in complete control. But the point of the health care proxy is to make sure that if the doctor does say that, and you know, I mean, these these, that, this document is important for everybody. It's really important once you get over like 65. By the way, I'm 65. I actually had to face trying to figure out Medicare this year. Not a pretty sight, right? To have a lawyer kind of stumbling around trying to figure this out. But so the point, you have to have this. You have to have it, right? To do a healthcare proxy, it needs to be signed by two witnesses. It does not need to be notarized. It's giving that person the power to make all medical decisions on your behalf that you could make. Often people will say, well, but I've got a living will. What's that? Well, I've got instructions regarding how I'm supposed to be taken care of. Those are totally unenforceable in Massachusetts. Totally unenforceable, no matter what you said in them, except in the, if it's part of the MOLST form. I'm going to get that to that in a second. And even if it's part of the MOLST form, it can be overridden at any time by your proxy. So your proxy plays a big, big role in all of this, OK? Um, by the way, that the, the, the only que the, a question I often get is, oh, if I sign a health care proxy, isn't somebody, they, aren't they going to put me in the nursing home? Because, of course, this is everybody's goal in life is to never go into the nursing home. Um, the answer to that is um, actually no. Uh, if the, if the, you, are, you, are, you have the right as an individual to, even after your health, you've signed this health care proxy, and even if your doctor says that you're no longer competent, you have the right at any time, even if you're incompetent, to revoke the proxy. There was actually a case that happened in Massachusetts where the proxy admitted Ma to the nursing home. And Ma didn't want to go to McLean's and said, I'm not going. Right? Um, and, so, and, and so this case went up. Right? There was actually a Supreme Judicial Court case on this. Right? And the court said, Ma's saying she wouldn't want to go, she wasn't going, amounted to a revocation of the health care proxy which meant the proxy couldn't admit her, which meant she couldn't get admitted unless there was a court order. This, this, is, this, is, uh, this is one of those great pieces of trivia. Now, how often does that happen? Not often, but I'm just telling you, you should be aware of that. So by signing it, you're not signing, you're not giving, you know, that kind of, you're always worried about your kids or whatever. You're not giving them the power to put you away, okay? So, um, so and and, and the, the, the healthcare proxy, as I say, can always be revoked. Yes, ma'am? What is the nursing home admission? Because I had a healthcare proxy in place when I was hospitalized. Mm -hmm. My assumption was that is now always my health care proxy, but is that not true? You, that, the, 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 your question is, um, you had your health care proxy. It was used when you were hospitalized because maybe you were in a coma or whatever, right? And so isn't that still your health care proxy? Well, the so as soon as you came out of the coma, was this a health care proxy you signed at the, at the hospital? Okay, so well, they helped me with it. They okay. So, so a couple of things. Um, when you came out of the coma and your doctor then declared in writing, somewhere in the medical record there's something that says she's back, mm -hmm. right? She's, uh, she's competent to make medical decisions. Mm -hmm. Then you came into power again, right? Okay. That health care proxy remained valid, except they might have thrown it away. Do you still have I that? Have it. You still have it. You have the original? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, So because usually the, 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 the ones that you do in the hospital, they throw away when you leave, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and just remember, if you're doing the one at the hospital, by every time you sign a health care proxy, you have thereby revoked all your other ones. So if you've got a, like one that you really worked on and it's got details and you did it with a lawyer and then you go to the hospital and they give you that form to sign, mm -hmm. by signing that form, you've revoked the old proxy. Okay. But right? So the be aware. One you had is, is the valid one. So what you typically want to do is when you have a health care proxy, uh -huh. give it to your lawyer or no, give it to you. No, give it to your doctor. Give it to your doctor so that if you go to the hospital or whatever, they'll call your doctor. He'll email it to the hospital. He'll email a copy. So what is that nursing home admission part? 
that's that's just if if the the the, the if if the healthcare proxy says that you're 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 supposed to go to this nursing home, but you say you don't want to go, you don't have to go. Oh, okay. So that's, that's just all. specific. That's to right. The incident. Okay. That's right. Um, I'm just going to mention that an interesting piece of trivia regarding healthcare proxy is that is that if you die, um, the person who has your healthcare proxy actually has the ability to give your remains away uh, to make an organ donation on your behalf. They stay in charge of your body for purposes of making an organ donation. In terms of what else happens to the body after that, that's in, you, whoever you named in your will as your personal representative, that person is in charge of your body. But for organ donations, it's the proxy. So if you're real, the one thing you may want to put in the proxy, if you really don't want to donate your body, is say right in the proxy, I don't want my body to be donated. Right? Yes, ma'am. I feel very strongly that it's a good thing to do, but somewhere I read that after a certain age, you're not eligible to give your, <coughs> excuse me, to give your organs. The question is, after a certain age, are you not eligible to give your organs? The answer to that is no, right? Um, it may be that they won't, that w they won't want them, that's right? That's what I meant, right? right? Yeah, and, and that's totally their decision. But typically, people who are making these donations, the things that the, that the organ bank wants the most it's actually called the New England Organ Bank. There is a real place. It's in Waltham, and that's where your body goes so that they can, there's a term for exculpate. Some, there's a word for this. I don't remember. Take the pieces out that they want and send the rest of the body back to the, wherever you want it to go, right? Um, typically, what they want are bone and tissue, bone and tissue. And that's why no matter what age you are, often those are pieces that they could re are really helpful to other, to other people, so things that they may really want. And once again, I think it is a wonderful thing, right? Um, so, oh, the MOLST. MOLST stands for Medical Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment, M-O-L-S-T. Um, this is the form that is replacing the DNR, the Do Not Resuscitate Order. The Department of Public Health spent a lot of time working on this, actually did a pilot project on it in Worcester to see if it worked. Uh, it was very successful, and so now they are really trying to encourage folks to do this as opposed to a do not resuscitate, right? Do not resuscitate means, and this is just going to be a couple of, do not resuscitate means, do not resuscitate, which means if your heart stops, don't try to start it again. Well, try, trying to start your heart when it stops is, can, is a very, going to be very painful to you, right? Which is it, because it's going to probably involve pushing down on your ribs so hard that you're gonna, they're going to break a bunch of them just to push down to your heart so that it can kind of start again. So many folks really didn't want to do that. That was the point of the do not resuscitate. Um, the the MOLST form um, uh, includes other things that you may not want to have done, like intubation. If you stop breathing, having somebody put a tube down your throat into your lungs and push air into your lungs, similarly so they can try to get, get it going again. Um, there are several other of, of these kinds of treatments. I'm going to just mention the most, to me, one of the most important ones is do not hospitalize. People always tell me that, that they want to die at home. Well, if you want to die at home, then you want to tell the ambulance driver if he arrives um, and you're unconscious that you don't want to go to the hospital. Because if you go to the hospital, they will save you, right? Um, because otherwise, it's bad for their statistics. I mean, they really want to save you. You know, doctors want to save people, but also, um, I know I used to be on the board at one of the hospitals and, 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 and at Marlboro Hospital for, and, and it, monthly at our meeting, we'd go over the statistics for the month and one of them was how many people died in the hospital? What's our mortality rate in the hospital? And if we hit a certain number, then that actually is reportable to the Department of Public Health and maybe inspectors come out and all this bad stuff. So. We really don't want you to die in our hospital. <laughs> so, so, so stay home. So, but, so if you want to stay home, that's the place you can put it now is in the MOLST form. Just one other word about the MOLST form. Um, the, the, the doctor has to sign the MOLST form. Technically, what's, you, you, you assent to it, but technically it's, it is a, like the DNR, it is a doctor's order to nurses and to the medical technicians and everybody else. So everybody else can, can now not do these things they would otherwise do and know they're not going to get sued for it, right? So the doctor has to be signing that most from. Yes, ma'am? Could you repeat one more time what it stands for? Medical that? Orders for Life-Sustaining Support. I should put that on the slide. I'm sorry. M-O-L. Treatment. Treatment. Oh. Treatment. Okay. Whoops. Medical Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment. M-O-L-S-T. <laughs> A very good point. Not the moles. The moles. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Is that in place of or is that in 
combo with the health care proxy? Um, that is, you're doing that to express your wishes so that if the health care proxy is not around, the EMT, everybody's going to follow that most form. One other thing about, about the most form, put it on your refrigerator. The reason why you put it on your refrigerator is because the EMTs at the, all the ambulance services, their training protocol, when they walk into your house and you're on the floor, is look at the refrigerator. If it's not there, they're going to stop looking, right? Because they're busy. You're on the floor. They've got to figure this out. So if it's not on the refrigerator, they're going to resuscitate you or they're going to take you to the hospital. But okay. can't some of that be part of the health care proxy? The, pro the, the, the question is, can't some of that be part of the health care proxy? No. No. No, because, because the doctor has to sign that document. The doctor has to sign the most, right? Oh, okay. Having said that, if you have a most, as I said earlier, and you're on the floor, but your proxy is there, your daughter who says, oh no, Ma wants, I still want Ma to go to the hospital, they're going to take her to the hospital okay. because the proxy can always over, overrule right. the most. Okay. Proxy yeah. can overrule everything. How do we get a most? How do you get a most? Talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. He's got him. The Department of Health, Public Health wants him to talk to you about this. What's the thing you have here? They've, you've got something. File of life. Which is you've got a file of life, which is, is it, Are you going to be talking about another, that? I'm not, I wasn't going to be talking about the file of life, although, although I can for a few minutes, but we may disagree on the value of the file of life. I'm going to, I'll talk about it in just a... The fire chief thinks it's important. Okay. Um, and by the way, this is one of the reasons, this is why you're doing the health care proxy, is because a me, if a medical decision has to be made and you haven't done this, then the only person that can make a medical decision for you, can't be your husband or your wife, can't be your kids, has to be your guardian. Guardianship process in Massachusetts on a good day is going to cost you five to $10,000. On a bad day, it involves fighting and all this stuff. It's awful, right? <laughs> Whereas just to have this little form, you avoid all that stuff, okay? Uh, power of attorney, that's the document as everybody here should have, but maybe you already have that. I'm just going through this. Doesn't have to be witnessed. Everybody thinks they do. Doesn't have to be notarized. Everybody thinks they do. Um, unless it, unless you're, you're, it involves real estate, unless it's going to be used to deed something on your behalf. Um, in the power of attorney, you should specify whether or not the attorney is allowed to gift some of your assets away. Otherwise, the law is that they can't gift your assets away, which in terms of doing mass health and other planning makes it very difficult um, uh, if you're not capable of making these decisions. And it should deal with self-dealing. Can your attorney, who may very well be your son or daughter, give money to him or herself? Especially, if it, I'm always thinking of it in mass health terms, and if you're trying to rearrange assets and qualify somebody for mass health. If there's self-dealing involved, it has to be specified in the power of attorney that, they, that, they can, that, they, that it's allowed. Um, finally, one of the things that many people don't realize, as opposed to the health care proxy, which the, you, you have to name one person at a time, right? Only one person can be your proxy, and then if that person isn't capable or able, then the next person in line can do it. For powers of attorney, you can name several people joint and, joint and severally, jointly and severally, so that you name a couple of your kids as the power of attorney. And the legal effect of that, as long as it says joint and several, is that either of them at any time can use it and act on your behalf. The both of them don't have to sign at the same time. And you do that to avoid this, because if you, if you haven't given somebody a power of attorney and they want to rearrange your assets for you, then they have to go through conservatorship proceedings, which cost just as much as guardianship. And the judge, and in that case, if they're trying to transfer assets out of your name, they need the judge's permission, and the judge may not give that permission. I know of probate judges that will say, no, that's a, that's a bad public policy to allow people to move assets out of their name so they can qualify for a government program, and so they won't allow it. That's not good, right? So, you want to, those, are the, so those are the only things that you really want to take care of. I'm just going to mention one other thing. Um, in this situation with Frank and Mary, what you, I'm just going to tell you something you don't have to do if you're Frank and Mary. If Mary needed to go to a nursing home at some later point, um, um, she could immediately qualify for Mass Health, almost immediately, by simply transferring all of her assets to her husband Frank, um, and then have, because he's allowed to own a home if he's at home, um, he's allowed to have this much in cash, $119,220, and he's allowed to have infinite income. So all you'd have to do is have Mary shift everything to Frank, have Frank go buy an annuity um, with the remaining money so that he gets his money over below that number, and then Mary can qualify for Mass Health. And I'm just saying that because what you don't have to do is you don't have to give all your money away to, an, like a, to your kids or an irrevocable trust and wait five years if you're still married, if you're married and both spouses are alive. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. If Frank dies, 
that's a different issue, but I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about that either. I, I talked about this, this this spring at one of the presentations that I did. Uh, I'm just going to mention one other thing. When you're still young, right? Um, I'm not a big fan of long-term care insurance in general. However, you should be aware that if you, if you have, an, first of all, if you have the biggest purpose for long-term care insurance for me is to protect your house, right? And the reason for that is if you have an old policy, first of all, that's dated before March 15, 1999, and that policy says that if you go to a nursing home, um, the policy, the insurer will pay $50 a day for two years, 730 days. If you have that policy and you were living in your home and then went to a nursing home and you say right in your mass health application that you do not intend to return home, your house is not a countable asset, it's not a lienable asset, and after you die, mass health has no claim against it. So it protects your house. So for Frank and Mary, where the house is about half of the value of all of their assets, this is a big deal. Now, if you bought that policy after March 15th, 1999, up and through today, um, it's, this still works, but the policy has to pay $125 a day for two years. That's all it has to pay. I, diff I typically am not crazy about long-term care insurance policies because the premiums are so high. And if you're Frank and Mary, you really don't need them because you can qualify for mass health. But if, if, if you want to protect the house, right, and you're worried that one of you may die and you haven't done any planning and now there's only one of you and is going to the nursing home, this would always protect the house. So the moral of the story, if you've got an old policy that you think, why would I ever keep this policy? It only pays $50 a day to the nursing home. Yeah, but it's protecting your house. I've ha I just had this come up in Nantucket. I do a lot of work in Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. The house worth a million three. They've got one of these policies. The house is safe. The wife's going to the nursing home and the, the $1.3 million house is completely safe. Um, so if there are any other questions, and if you want to see this presentation again because you loved it so much, or you talk to somebody who says, oh, I'd really like to see that, it's going to be on, it should be on Hollis and Cable. Um, it, but in addition to that, Frank and Mary have their own YouTube channel, and that's it. Um, and you can see it on YouTube. Okay? Um, thank you very much. Oh, and the goal of all of this stuff, of everything that we all said here, is to sleep well at night. I found one of the things I like about dealing with mostly older people is that fame and fortune has become irrelevant. The question is, can you get a good night's sleep? You know? <laughs> um, are there any questions for any of these folks or for me regarding any of the programs that they talked about? Anything at all? If not, thank you very, very much. We really appreciate it. Um, we are going to be doing a second presentation here. I'm going to be doing that in October, but I don't have the date. Otherwise, I would say what the date is, but you, we'll be doing a, a letter on that. Thank you very much.